What up ladies and gents, this is the third part of my disk guide series and this part will be on UI and add-ons. And I'm essentially going to talk about sort of my ideology when creating my UI, uh, you know, what I'm, what I'm looking to get out of it, uh, kind of some rules, I guess, uh, for what I want to have shown and, and where I want to have it shown. Um, and just kind of all, all that kind of deep dive, you know, good stuff, uh, that generally, unless you're really trying to min max something, you're not really going to think about. Um, I feel like a lot of people just go for aesthetics with regard, uh, with, with disregard for any sort of actual, you know, functional optimization. So that's kind of where I've gone for with it. Um, I hope that it is helpful for you. Um, maybe you want to create your own UI uh, using similar add-ons. Uh, if not, and you want to just grab what I've got, you can head over to my Twitch channel. So this is kind of what I'm going to start with, and it probably looks ghetto AF right now. And you're thinking, what the fuck, Ryan? What are you doing? Um, There'll be, it will all become clear, but I just wanted to start like this for kind of simplicity. Um, so right now, all we have is we have the player unit frame. We have the target unit frame with the buffs underneath and debuffs. This is just default blizzard ones. And we have a cast bar. Now the cast bar is moved off to the side. And the reason for this is if you have it in the default location, then it will be underneath all your buffs that are here. And when somebody has loads of buffs and debuffs, the cast, up, cast bar gets pushed down and it will be in a different place basically all the time. By moving it here, it is always in the same place. It's also slightly increased in size and I've done this with a script. Uh, before I forget, all the scripts that I've used uh, are available on Deathblind. I will put a link to it in the description. Uh, Currently, myself, I have all my scripts preloaded into an add-on, which is available to subs, as I said. Um, so if you want to just grab them all in one go, that's another way you can go about it. Uh, so continue on. Cast bars over to the side. I actually have the target of target up here so that it doesn't block the last debuff slot here, which it usually does. Um, so you can have an extra two just there uh, without there being any sort of issues. Um, so that's that's kind of my 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 unit frames and and they're slight. I brought them slightly in from the corner uh, because I want my general area of focus in the game to be like this red box, All right? This is like my general focus area. Um, I check down here sometimes to see cooldowns, but other than that, you know. This, this sort of area. Other than that, this box is my general area of focus because you can't possibly look at the whole screen uh, in any sort of optimal and quick fashion. So that's the reason I brought these down. Now I also have the, the party frames, which I'm using raid frames for because the party frames actually don't show atonement. So you want to use raid frames because they're a lot clearer. It's a lot easier to see atonement, general debuffs, and it's a lot easier to um, to see HP in general. So that's why we're using raid frames and that's why they've been brought in from the side. Um, so this is where my, my, uh, my part is going to be. And as you can see that it's going to be again inside that, that rectangular box we were talking about. Right. Um, and that's the, that's the reasoning for it. Right. I'd like to try and give the reasoning for it so that it sort of what I've done makes sense. And, and when you understand that, then you can kind of, make a decision on, you know, how you want to set it up for yourself. Next thing we've got is diminishing returns. Diminishing returns is, I would say something that is underrated, diminishing returns on yourself. A lot of people track them on the enemies, but not a lot of people track them on themselves and their team. And I think it's valuable. I, th I think it's valuable in terms of seeing when the next go is going to happen. If you see that your polymorph cooldown is coming off, or sorry, your polymorph diminishing return on yourself is coming off, you know that that mage is going to start pushing on you soon to try and do another go. 
um, and, and to try and get a sheep on you. And you can give your team pre-warning of this. So that's the reasoning for that. Obviously, you would track like stuns and various other things as well. Um, test mode doesn't show that at the moment. Um, but again, knowing when that kidney shot's coming off DR is, is valuable in, in trying to pre-dome it, for example, if he's going to kidney you again. Uh, so that, that's why I like being able to see diminishing return. So same goes for team. You can tell your teammates, if your teammate is on diminishing return for stun, even if you get CC'd, you can tell them, yo, you're, you're, you're okay, bro. You're going to be all right. You don't need to do any nutty pre, uh, pre CDs here. You're on stun DR for like the next six seconds or whatever. Um, you know, you don't need to say all this in the game. You can literally just convey you're fine. Um, and, and then they'll be, you know, trusting of you and hopefully and not use too many defensive cooldowns. So that's the reasoning for the, the diminishing returns on team. I think that's, that's useful to a degree as well. The next thing we've got is team cooldowns. And I've got my team cooldowns on the left. And this is something that I'm not checking all the time, which is why it's over on the left outside of that box of focus that we were talking about. Um, it's something that you can check occasionally, mostly to confirm, right? A lot of the things on the UI, you're, you're, you're playing the game, you're looking at what's happening in the game. You don't know exactly the timing of stuff or the, exactly if somebody's used something. So you check over here to confirm. You can confirm, okay, he's vanished. It's 30 seconds from coming up. You can confirm, okay, yeah, he did trinket that kidney shot. He doesn't have trinket now for the next two minutes. And then you'll be able to see, you know, when his trinket is coming back up again. Um, and, and, you know, when he's safe. And that can dictate whether or not you push for a fear, things like that. Um, so that's why it's really important to be able to see team cooldowns. And that actually clears up comms as well, because it doesn't mean, it means you don't continually need to be like, oh, yo, do you have trinket up? When's your trinket up? That sort of thing. Because you can see it on your UI. Um, so I think that's actually a very valuable thing to be able to see as a healer. Uh, and I initially actually just got it as a streamer, but, uh, now I'm seeing the value of it just as, as a player overall, I think, it, I think it's a very valuable tool. Generally, I don't track my own ones, but I have test mode on right now. Um, so that's why they're showing up. It's again, personal preference. If you would like to track your own ones, by all means, it's, it's again, personal preference. Um, so that's that's Omni CD. Uh, the diminishing cool uh, yeah, diminishing returns uh, add-on. It's called diminish. Put the brackets of the add-on name under each kind of aspect. Uh, the next part we're looking at is Omnibar, and Omnibar I use to track enemy kick cooldowns, and I have them up here. And the reason I have them up here is because it's close to if if I'm going for a cast. Generally, it means that, you know, if, I, if I'm going for a cast that I really care about if it's going to get kicked, I'm going to be focused up here. You know, it's because I'm getting trained. It's because somebody is getting in trouble. You know, something's happening in the game that's requiring um, urgent, urgent healing attention, I guess, that you want to make sure does not get stopped. Um, and so the reason that kicks are up here is just because it's closer to the health. Uh, I track other enemy CDs in other places. The kicks are up here just because it's close for ease of use. Um, nothing more complicated than that. The dispels are over here. Um, I I found that I was I had the dispel bar, and this is essentially a new bar that I created in Omni Bar, and I added in the dispel IDs too. That's all it is. People ask me if it's a weak aura or whatnot. No, it's literally just Omni Bar, same as the kicks. Um, and I, I found that I was actually missing spotting these. So I just moved it in a really obvious place that I felt like I would not miss it when a healer was was popping dispel. And it's something that, you know, is valuable if you want to go for a mind games so that it doesn't get dispelled. It's valuable if you want to go for a fear that won't get dispelled, that sort of thing. Um, and again, it's confirmation, right? It's, you might suspect that something got dispelled, but you now can 100% see, okay, yeah, I think, did he get dispelled? Yeah, he did. The dispel cooldowns there. Again, we're talking about confirmation. That's what a lot of this is for. Next part is big debuffs. Now, this is something that I feel like I was slow on until I got this. Um, and that is teammates getting CC'd. Right now, it's really obvious with this add-on to me. If somebody gets feared, if they get sheeped, um, anything like that, it's massive. You can't miss it. 
Um, and this actually really helped me speed up my defensive dispelling and I would really recommend it. It's something that will massively assist your uh, your team if you're quick on dispels. You know, you can, you can really be um, detrimental to the enemy team's go if you get a dispel in early before they're fully set up before they've fully got all their cross CC in because it allows then your team to cause them problems. Um, it also shows stuns and roots. Um, I also have UA set up on mine. I have Debarring Plague set up on mine, Mind Games, um, all big just because it makes them really obvious. You know, if a big CC shows up, but they also have, you know, like a big fear shows up, but they also have UA, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I don't dispel that one um, because I felt like UA was not that obvious for me. So I added the UA dispel code manually to big debuffs. Again, if you're interested in that, you can check out my uh, my Twitch stream to find out how to get that setting. Uh, it's not that hard to add yourself if uh, if that's what you're about. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have to say about big debuffs. Um, next part is my focus target. Nothing too crazy here. I've I've literally got my focus target underneath. Um, roughly vertically underneath the target. And this is, again, just more um, more confirmation that somebody important is casting, um, but mainly to track the debuffs. I mainly use focus right now to track uh, certain buffs and debuffs on that target without having to tar target them manually. Um, I did, however, move the, the cast bar above the focus room because usually it's below and that's just way too outside of my box of focus for me to be happy with it. Uh, so I moved it with a script. Uh, it's literally pretty much the same script um, that I used to resize the target cast bar and move the target cast bar. The last thing that I want to uh, want to talk about, and this is this is a big one, this is Gladius X and this is my arena frames. And the reason I like this so much is because usually people use Omnibar to track various offensive and defensive CDs. And at, for a while, I had a block of offensive CDs, and I had a block of defensive CDs, and I had a block of kicks, uh, I had a block of stuns, and it was just, it was, uh, it was really, it was a lot of information that I didn't need, and it felt like it was hard to pick out the information that I actually wanted to confirm on it because things were not in a reliable location for me to go and check them. Now, I have an arena frame. I have a mage frame. I'm like, okay, can I check his combust cooldown? Has he used combust? It's right there. It's always gonna be next to the mage and I can always check in the same place for it. Uh, I can check I can check for either the cooldown of it or when it gets used, it obviously has a, an animation so that you can see it's been used. It has cooldown numbers on it. Um, so this makes it a lot more obvious to me when certain things are being used so that I can then use a counter cooldown. And it also makes it obvious to me, for example, if the warrior has spell reflect up or not, whether or not I need to fake that mind games or not. Um, and it's always in an intuitive place next to the frame of the respective person. Uh, so that's why I like these arena frames so much. They're very, very customizable. I wholeheartedly recommend them. Uh, I feel like I've improved significantly since upgrading from S Arena to this. Uh, and now you can see why I sort of wanted to do it in bits. Had I shown you this initially, you'd have been like, whoa, I'm well overwhelmed. Uh, the reason it looks like so intense right now is because everything is active essentially right now. Um, usually there will be less on the screen than this. This is just because test mode gets a bit crazy. Um, but when you know what each individual thing is, uh, it becomes more obvious that it is about playing the game, looking at what's happening in the game, and then checking, you know, different areas, you know, to confirm your suspicions, essentially. And, and almost the same goes for your health and their health, you know? You can tell when people are doing a go on you, then you check your health. You can tell when someone's doing a go on your oak, then you check his health. Rest of the time, you are, sh are li literally just, you know, watching what's happening in the game. And that's what this rest, the rest of this space is, is essentially for, um, you know, down here in between. I'm trying not to cluster it up too much because if you cluster it up too much into one big blob, you can't really see anything behind that. But because I've sort of spread it out, 
there's space to see what's happening in the game. Um, and something that I've been, you know, an idea that I've been toying with is moving this all the way over here, potentially. Something like that. And then moving these frames, these two, moving them like here, right? And then the party frames here. And then my area of focus is, is again, sort of like the center, but everything is more shifted. Um, so that's potentially something that you could do if you're designing your own UI. I would, I would say that's uh, potentially an upgrade from what I've got here and something that I'll probably look to do in the future. But right now I'm pretty happy with how I've got mine set up and I think feel like it's working for me. Um, one other thing I will say is the a lot of people ask me what um, what nameplate add-on I'm using, and it is literally just big debuffs. I haven't really changed any of the settings on big debuffs for it. It's pretty much just out of the box. Um, you know, it does what it says on the tin. So that's pretty much all of the like arena focused add-ons, I guess. Uh, we also have dampening display, which shows the dampening number at the top. Uh, and safe queue, which tells you how long you've got left in queue. I recommend getting both those so you don't miss queues and see how long you've been in the game. Also, reflex is kind of like arena statistics. Uh, that will tell you, well, I'll show you, in fact. Shows you your match history. Um, it's useful when you come to sort of analyze what comps you've been doing well with, how you've been doing recently, that sort of thing. Uh, couple of other useful ones I have. I have Arc Dark. That is essentially a script that I've put into an add-on. Uh, and what that does is allows you to create a macro. Let me find it. Called Arc Dark. You make it empty. So it allows you to switch between the talents and without actually using it, it will switch the bind. Um, if you're interested in that, it is in my UI pack as well. Um, details, obviously, just to kind of get a bit more of an insight into, a, a, you know, the damage and healing number of dispels. You can use this to analyze games. Uh, definitely worth it as well. Advanced interface options, just to change some, some random settings. Uh, it's a useful thing to have if you know what you're doing. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother with it. Uh, disable auto add spells. If you have some macros where, like I do with a help harm, uh, this stops any sort of spells also adding to your bar when you respec if you don't have them, you know, directly in the macro, uh, which can be a bit annoying. Um, Hydra is literally just all my scripts. My slot is good for if you are playing multiple characters and you want to copy your keybinds, uh, otherwise not needed. Leatrix Plus I just use for auto quest turn-in. It's relatively irrelevant for PvP. Um... Uh, Weak auras I use for my pet bar in case the pet dies. Sometimes the pet bar bugs out. Uh, with the weak aura, it does not. That's it. That's all my add-ons right now. Um, hopefully, they were all explained well enough. Uh, I don't think I've forgotten anything. No, I think we're good. Um, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um... If you've got any good add-ons that you think might be useful or you think that do a better job than my current ones, please do let me know in the comments. I would love to hear about it. I'm always trying to trying to upgrade and optimize my UI. Uh, in the future, I might review some people's UIs on stream and do a YouTube video of it, something like that. Uh, and we can see what like a bad UI looks like and, and how, how we would improve it. And what the issues realistically are with it. I think that might be useful for you guys. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for now. Next video will be on advanced stuff for Arena. Um, and that will be in the near future. I'm not sure when, but I've got a few uh, more advanced things for, you know, like the 2K plus guys rather than the people that are just starting out disc and, and don't, you know, I don't want to overwhelm them essentially. Uh, these are things that you don't want to be focusing on straight away because you will have more basic things to learn. But yeah, that'll be in the near future. I don't want to go into it too much now. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a great one. I'll see you later.